Hi there. In this video, I'm just going to talk a bit more about visualization and just um, making your your uh, representation, graphical representation of your your spatial data, uh, a bit clearer. Um, perhaps revealing um, some patterns, um, but just kind of clearing the decks a bit, uh, trying to uh, declutter the map as well. Um, we looked at display filter in another video, um, which can help do that. So, but let's just turn on these two layers I've got. Um, I've got some uh, what's called Leicester stops, which are from the NAPTAM um, public transport database, stops for uh, trains, trams and buses, um, which is a public data, data set. Uh, that's actually from a geo package. And then I've got this, um, let's turn off that one for the moment. Um, and I've got this one, this Leicester pubs, which is just a local, uh, I think it's a shape file actually. Let's, let's see. Uh, sorry, it's a geodatabase actually. Um, but this one over here is a SQL Server, as you can see. But at the moment, I have these two layers, they're greyed out. Why are they greyed out? Well, it's the, the, the um, process I'm sure you're familiar with, which is about when you um, zoom in close enough, eventually data starts to appear. So in this case, I've got this like icons for buses. Um, if you click on those, you can find those icons in the gallery. Uh, under ArcGIS 2D. If you scroll right down, you can see some great icons there to choose from. Um, and I've got this little um, sort of glass for uh, pubs. I'll need a coffee and juice bar. Um, and if I click on one of the bus stops, and that's the bus stop. So this is the um, NAPTAN data. This is an open source data set and it's kind of updated typically by councils, etc., with their bus stops and you've got default wait time. I mean, there's all, there's all kinds of data in there, um, which is quite good to use for GIS tutorials like this. So we've got all this, but as I zoom in a bit closer, get a bit closer, you then start to get labeling. Okay, so so that's that's one way. You, you, you start drawing as you use these zoom scales. And these zoom scales, uh, I'm sure you're aware, when you click on a layer, go to properties, you can see that gen in general setting, I'm not drawing anything uh, from this pub layer outside 1 to 15,000. So um, as soon as I'm out, you see down here, it's 15,657. So it's a bit outside, so it falls. So as soon as I go in, I get um, to 10,000, I, I get that layer and the other layer drawing. Um, but I have to go closer to um, before I start seeing labeling. Um, and in fact, the labeling for the pubs appears first, you see, um, and when I zoom in a bit closer, we then get the sort of common names for the bus stops and the pubs. So the labeling is handled under label properties. And you can see uh, this sort of scale bar icon here, visibility range. So that's where I'm changing the labeling when, um, you know, when that class turns on and off. So it's a pretty standard thing. Um, I'm sure you come across it before, but it's just to, just to remind you, it's a straightforward, simple way of controlling what's drawn. Another way of, of displaying this, this data is actually um, by using um, the clustering that, that you can you get get with it. So if I look at let's say um, let's not bother about the pubs for the moment. If it's only stops, let's just turn off my visibility sort of ranging so that to none. So you see it's quite a mass. These, these, this is all just drawn. This is selected. Um, stops by the way in the Leicester area. So it's just drawn as a mass. But one thing you may not be aware of is under the appearance tab up here you can see aggregation. And with aggregation there's a really neat function just called clustering. I turn clustering on and now look what's happened. Literally with one button you've now got this effect on your map. Um, so you can see how as I zoom out the clusters contain more of the data as I set scale. So now the big icon there is set to 2025 so there's loads of stops um, it's a mix of stops by the way it's, it's buses and trains um, but it's point data and as I zoom in you'll see it all break up and eventually um, uh, go in uh, turn into the single um, entities the single points so you can see this um, hay market center here there's 22 there 26 up there because that's there's a lot of bus station stuff around there and certainly as we zoom into let's say here you can see them marked Haymarket Centre these these bus stops and let's go in further and there's lots of them so clustering great way to um, 
simplify your your drawing see your sort of aggregation stuff um you know where, where, where everything is um like a hotspot so another method of um of aggregating your data uh, is called feature binning now feature binning is this sort of you can create hex, hexagons with a, with a value um, for each one and, and, and as it zooms out and zooms in it can um, recalculate but the, the the point is you can't just do the, use this binning approach for aggregating um, point features into dynamic polygons uh, on any data set it has to actually be a proper database a relational database so if I was to click on this now it'll say unsupported because this is just this is just a um, uh, this is just a geo package and doesn't support binning. If I go to if I turn off that one and now turn off this turn on this one sorry this one is a SQL Server connection so you can see my um, connection feature class there to, to a SQL Server. Let's just bring that in. So that's this. Okay. So um, so this is my data. So this data there is what's on here. And I've talked about SQL Server and mapping features in a previous video. So you can use feature binning here. So what, what does that actually mean? Well, you need, you need the toolbar for that, first of all, to enable binning. Um, I've just done it, so it's already in recent, but you literally just type um, bin and it will come up so you need to enable feature binning first um, enable it on your RDBS um, relational data um, geodatabase your proper data, uh, enterprise database so that's DBO pubs uh, you can define the kind of object so I'm just going to use standard flux hexagon again play around with that uh, as, as you wish set the coordinate system now I haven't really got any um, stats in this in these pubs um, not much anyway um, it's just sort of location and name so but the idea is with binning is you do have a vast amount of data that's really what the feature binning's for uh, clustering is fine it's great works very easily etc binning a bit more complex as you'll see but you really you know should be having um, some statistics statistical data um, for each of the polygons dynamically created so we'll create a, um, a cache because um, It'll be quicker, and it's um, it's very static data. This pub, these pubs actually, I've just taken a load. I'm not really updating it, so I'm going to cache it. Um, but if your data is changing a lot, then um, you know you, you don't. So on in here, um, you can see that I've just got this postcodes one and pubs. So pubs is the one being mapped. That's the only tables I've got. So let's see what happens when I enable that. So I'll enable feature binning. Okay, and it automatically generates the initial hexagon so let's look back in this table and a refresh you can see it's created this table inside the database so this is where it's finding all the um, uh, uh, it's generating the um, sorry my um, I'm on the wrong thing I'll just select the data from that one so I was looking at uh, I was looking at pubs um, yeah so this is where it's um, storing the bins calculating the bins and um, uh, so it's created a new table in your SQL Server. So let's go back. So here you can see that all the hexagons replaced. Let's let's just turn on the pubs on top. Um, probably need to remove the um, scale setting. So you can quite clearly see the relationship there. The darker um, blue hexagons there. You can you can change that in here. Um, it's just a symbol. Um, darker, where, where there's a greater concentration you see a greater density and uh, and as the light as the color gets a lot lighter you got, it, it's just sort of thinner um, thinner data so that's what um, is being sort of created these these um, polygons so you can see in this dark one I've just clicked count shape is nine so there's obviously a few more um, records in there um, and it's dynamic so as I zoom out you'll see the rest of the data um, let's just turn off pubs again and the um, it's dynamically scaling the size of the hexagons 
there's various configurations you can use in, in the hex guns. You see how um, and uh, um, uh, appearance. Um, we've got that's where we we picked up this this data in the first place. Um, if you click on the layer where you've got the binning taking place, you'll see you have a new tab aggregation in it and it's binning. So you click on binning and then there's a variety of settings. Summary statistics, like I said, there, there aren't any. So, you, you, you know, you would, you would pick um, your, your um, summary fields to use and, and generate what you want there. But that's not here nor there. You can also set some symbology. Um, but, but a key thing actually is to um, increase the size of the bins. So this makes, you see how I've now got a very simplified hexagon sort of shapes, uh, a number of hexagons because they're, they're so large. So, but if I can reduce it to much smaller, so it's picking up um, finer granularity of the feature point data set. So, um, but like I said, ideally, this is something you'd use on a much, much larger data set with lots of stats, but it is a, um, a good way to um, visualize the data when you do have that kind of thing, you know, massive data, perhaps it's, um, signal data from, from mobile masts or something um, but you, you know where you've got um, meter by meter calculations or, or, or something like that so to disable well um, to turn binning off you can just turn off binning with with the um, sorry you can uh, go to where is it again appearance aggregation and then just set none and it'll turn off binning um, or you can switch back to clustering very quickly uh, that, that you can change that symbol it just comes up with a default change it to none but the just because I've turned binning off the tables remain the same in there so we still got that initial um, metadata sort of table in there defining the um, all the details about how to draw those hex skins get rid you actually need to disable if you want to get rid so you go to disable feature binning um, and what table is it well it's those pub ones so let's run that so that's completed and now if we refresh f5 you see that that table there that's now gone um, i think you can just delete it um but i haven't tried doing that just from the database but i, I suspect you can but um, um i just use the, the the tools available anyway i hope you find that useful a few ways to um just show your point data um you know in different um, visualizations and um, yeah, I hope you find that useful. Thanks very much.